Hey guys, it's Ellen here. I have this uh, cute little teddy bear tutorial. If you're a Patreon member, you have the traceable. Otherwise, um, I'll show you how to draw this. It's kind of a long video today, so I hope you enjoy it. Uh, it might have got a little overexposed at the end, but um, you know, you figure out the colors. So, also don't forget to hit the bell notification button to know my tutorials are up. And if you have any questions, leave them in the comment section. And let's get started. Okay, for this. Uh, watercolor tutorial. I'm going to go over my supplies again. Uh, I have a 6 by 9 inch piece of Arches 100% cotton cold pressed paper. I've taped down with scotch tape on just a piece of cardboard. My palette here with my paints. Um, I always have them in the description box and I talk about them as I use them. My paper towel, my brushes. Um, These will also be talked about as I go along and they will always be in the description box. My water jars. Um, if you're a Patreon member, you can download the traceable. If not, I'm going to teach you how to draw it, just like this simply. Now I always tell people to draw into shapes. Shapes is the easiest way. So for the face, right, for his teddy bear face, you're going to start with kind of like an oval, just like that, and then a smaller one just hitting the bottom one down here, and then another one the nose then you have the little eyes which is circles and then for the mouth just a dash dash and then the line come down in a curve right and you already got his cute little mouth then for the hat you're going to kind of cut through the top of this oval and just curve it like this and do these curves on both sides that's the brim of the hat and of course we're going to make it a little spiky so I'm doing this wiggle drawing here, right? Fuzzy, spiky, not spiky. And then for the ears, just basically a half circle. Another half circle. And then continue the hat just like this. And then again, it's gonna have a fuzzy pom-pom. For the bird, he's pretty easy. He's put a circle, two legs down. I did a little tail here and a little wing and a beak and an eye. Now we're going on to the body. Um, it's a little trickier, but doable. So we're going to do the scarf first. Just two lines down here. We're going to connect them. And then we do the little knot here. See, lines out, lines out. Connect, a little dash. You slow the video down to really see how I'm drawing this, right? And then for the hands. Well, we're I did the body first and then I did the present and I just erased the stuff. So you can do the body here. So you can go like this. Curve it here. Kind of like curve it here. You can just erase this line. And then you can do his sweater. Curve here. A little bump again. Another curve here. And then the feet. Just going on an angle here, 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 here. And then we're going to put the snow. Right, and then we're going to put the hand in. So we're going to put the arm curve here, and then put the other hand. So it's like a half circle. And then we're going to put the little hand here again, half circle. And then we do the present, which is basically a rectangle. A line here. Don't touch this part. Cross and a line here. And then he's holding the present and then the simple bow and then you get technical here where the half moon hand is you do a little rim here for the little sleeve and here it's hiding and then we're going to do the little details of the um, bottom of his sweater and then just back here simple snow with some simple triangle trees and then you can just put whatever you want all around here you know snow whatever you'll see as i go along Triangle trees. See the half moon hand? And you're going to make it a little fuzzy when you're painting it. You could draw it this way, fuzzy, and you can just paint right on top of your pencil. And the scarf could be a plaid. So just lines together, crisscross. See? Parallel lines spaced apart on a diagonal. And you have the plaid scarf. 
and we'll be filling this all in but see how I just drew the shape and then you know of course with your brush you're gonna make these little fuzzy marks or bumpy marks so it's kind of like a little cute little teddy bear and then we're gonna paint in some detail with the sweater we can just do little V's stripe big snowflake you know I didn't really draw that in my traceable I wanted people to figure out what they wanted to do and that's kind of it this is little funky feet it's kind of like just these lines curve down in the snow we'll go over here he's in the snow so that's that that's how I draw it like I said I just slow the video down and you'll you'll get it otherwise if you're a patreon member go over there the link will be in my description box and it's always in my about page and you know you can just download the traceable so let's get started um, I'm gonna be using probably my Grumbacker my Princeton 8 and 4 long round for these uh, tutorial and let's start off by making uh, you could do the background first you could do it later it doesn't really matter I think I'll start off by painting him and then I'll do that last so let's just do the teddy bear this part of the oval, we want to make a light pale beige, and the rest is going to be a little bit darker. So I've got my Van Dyke Brown. Going to make some um, yellow golden tones too. So you want some darker browns and some lighter browns. So you mix up a few browns. This is like a yellow golden brown. I'm going to grab a little Payne's Gray and mix that in there. And then I have the Van Dyke Brown also. And then I can grab some of that, make it a little bit darker. So we're going to have different tones. So I would wash in just a little bit. Of, get this band dyke brown really loose wet. I'm going to wash in. So I'm going to add some more water. I didn't actually put more paint. I added water. And I'm just taking my ground back on number 10. And I'm just loosely putting this color in on his face. It doesn't have to be he, but I'm making it he. You're not going to have to follow the little drawing precisely. You want that loose look. Just like that. And you can do the ears too at the same time. Just fill in the color, the ears, the hands. While it's still damp, we're going to wash in some other tones. Just fill it all in, and then his feet too. While you have all the color mixed up. It's good to paint all the areas you know what you want for the color when it's all mixed up. It just saves you a lot of time. And while this area is drying, because we're painting the other areas, we can go back and we could paint in the, the lighter beige face. So I'm just loosely painting this in, so I'm using this bigger brush. The bigger brushes tend to make you paint looser, the smaller, tighter. So I'm going to go in and add some darker tones. I'm going to add some paints gray to my brown. Maybe a little Prussian blue. I'm just going to dab in some darker tones. Remember, it's going to dry lighter. So kind of just on this side here. Just tapping it in. I'm not, you know, letting the, I'm letting the paint bleed. I'm adding some magenta. I want these different color tones, the browns. I don't want a too dark, dark brown. I'm just going to put in some lighter, medium tone browning over here. We got the light, light. Just going to add some of this deeper brown up over in here. So this might have dried pretty fast. I'm just going to go in and add some color anyway. Going to add some of this brown. I'm just loosely painting this in. Now, if you want to twitch your paintbrush, the, the long round, 
Princeton, you can start to make those little fuzzy things I was talking about. So you just take the tip and go outward, push the paint outward, and you have this little fuzzy pointy strokes to make it look like, you know, he's got fur. He is not a flat little guy. And out here. Don't make it too pointy and fuzzy. I mean, it would look kind of like fake and not real. Just make a couple of them. I'm just going to go in and fill in some darker tones here. See, I'm just really doing this really loosely. Just kind of washing and pushing the color around. And I'll just take the brush tip and I'll put out a little, couple of little strokes here and there. And then you can put some even like some darker darker ones just a couple don't go crazy I like them more like a nice brown colored teddy bear you can make them lighter if you want even darker if you wanted to my kids had a um, my oldest the nanny that he had when he was a baby she handmade these teddy bears for them they're so cute and they're really dark like that really dark teddy bear she's no longer with us but we save those they can give them to their kids I keep them because now that they're older you know boys don't want teddy bears girls would like them but boys no they'll think about it when they're much older and have kids if they have kids <laughs> Okay, so I'm just putting in some really deep dark tones as you see. I just washed in some of this. And for the inner ear, so like the hair would have an inner ear, I'm putting in the darker center. I don't really have it in the sketch. Yes, I do. I have a little bit of the sketch. It's kind of bleeding right now, so I'm going to let it dry a little bit. But you get the idea that it's inner ear. And then, like I said, you can take even darker tones and just kind of wisp out, even on the hat brim, because we're going to make that. Kind of like a Santa hat, red and white. Just a few, you know, even darker with a really dark tone. Don't want to go too crazy. Just give you the idea of like a really fuzzy teddy bear. And I'm adding in some more dark tones down here. Just like that. So I don't want to just keep doing that. For the hat, you could make it a color, any color you want, and you can make it white, like a Santa hat. So I'm gonna, I have a red mixed up here, just grab whatever red you have, and this will be the hat body. And I think I'm gonna do the brim of the hat, like oh, white. And so if I wanted to do that white, I'll just put some dark gray strokes like we did with the fuzzy body on the hat brim like you see in the sketch um, to indicate that it's a you know it's got like a fuzzy pom pommy kind of brim so I'll take a gray I have a gray's bunch of grays mixed up over here I'll water it down a little bit and I'll just take the same tip of the brush just push out little lines Let me zoom in a little bit Just see the tip of the brush and we're just doing these little lines like you see in the sketch. Do, do, do. I want them gray. Well, they could be bluish gray, but I want them different color than the body of the teddy bear. So you just put them on the edge and you can put a few inside the edge like I'm doing here. And then we're going to grab like a bluish tone, light blue. So I have um, some Prussian I'll mix with some magenta, we'll get ultramarine color. Whatever blue, you can have like a lighter, really pale periwinkle kind of blue. I'm mixing some peacock in there too, just figuring out what kind of blue I like. Okay, I mixed up a blue. I always like to tap it on the paper towel to see if I like the color. You could do it on a piece of paper if you don't have some good scrap. 
So then I'm just going to take the body of this brush, the belly, I'm just going to hold it sideways a little bit, just push in just some light blue around the edges. Just like that, just a little bit. Nothing too fancy schmancy. And we can do the same thing with the pom pom up top. Just do the little lines. Move it down. The little lines indicate it's a fuzzy pom pom. See, I'm just making the little dash lines. Fuzzy, fuzzy. And then we're going to add blue to that also. Just a little bit. The bird could be any color. I think since I have a red hat, if I make a red bird, it's going to distract from the red hat. So I'm going to make the bird blue. And since we already have the blue color mixed up, I'll just go in here and fill it him in the blue bird. Do the whole body, and then we can go in and add um, details for the wing and whatnot when it dries. While that's drying a bit, I can go and add a couple of tones, just a little bit deeper. Just tap in in the bottom here. And he also could have a little fuzzy sticking out of him. A little fuzzy cute bird. Alright, so I'm going to let that little guy dry. And we're going to zoom back out. So we're just going to fill this all in. The present can be any color. The sweater can be any color. I think the sweater I'll make um, a green. So I have my olive green here. I can make a nice deep green or a light green. I'll add some Prussian blue to that. It's a bluish green. I'm just going to fill this in pretty quickly. I think the present will end up being either red I'm going to fill this whole sweater in, even the brim, the edge, the edging, um, which is a little thing here, the band, or you don't have to do that. And since I decided to do that, I'm doing that. You can just go ahead and keep that color a little bit different or separate it. But for easier and intense purposes, I'm just going to fill it in. And then we can go back in and manipulate it. Now the scarf, we want to make it a plaid. And I think we'll do a multi-plaid. So we're going to have some greens. I'll put some green. I had the two da uh, dashed lines, but for me painting it, I'm just going to paint that. Pretend those two dashed lines are connected. Let's see, and then paint that on a diagonal. like that. I'm going to be adding other color tones. Try not to hit the, the uh, bow. If you make a mistake, don't worry about it. All right, so we have that green. And then we'll do the cross of the green. So you do that like a little band and then you cross it. Seems like a lot of green right now, but we're going to be adding some reds and other colors. Okay, while this is still damp, if you want to go and take some your yeah, green and mix up a really deep green, so I have my Prussian blue, a little brown. Make like a nice deep dark green. And you can kind of just tap it under the present. If it's still wet. If it's not wet, it won't work, but oops, a little red there. I'm gonna have to just paint the, the green there instead. Because it dried. I just want a little darker tone. Painting that out and then painting it here. So leaving that band 
still that light green just going on top of that so now that it is wet because I painted on top of the whole color I'm going to add even a darker tone of that green mixing up a really deep dark one and just tap 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 just on the edges where the hands are and up here and here and here. So it's just kind of like differentiates it. Differentiate. I can't speak today. Between the band of the sweater and the band. That's not the part that's not the band. So while that's drying, we'll go back and we'll work on our plaid again. Um, if this brush is too hard for you to maneuver, use a smaller number four. You can make much smaller lines. I'm going to grab that red. Nice red. I'm going to go on both sides of the green. See that? Both sides. Just a skinny little line and then same thing crisscrossing it. Look how cute that plaid is. Both sides of the green. But you don't have to do that. Like I said, change it up. It doesn't even have to be plaid. If you don't even like plaid, you might want like a striped scarf. You might want a polka dot one or just a plain old solid color scarf. I can do the phrase too at the same time. I can do the little phrase in red. And that's cute being red and green. The little details sometimes matter. So where the greens crisscross, you want to put the darker green. So it's a little time consuming, but the payoff looks really cute. So you, because you want, you know, the plaids are intertwining, the threads would be darker. Kind of like a gingham, but even plaids themselves. So I just took this little brush because it's tiny. I'm just going into those little squares where the two greens meet. And you have this really cute little plaid. It kind of looks realistic, even though it's just this cute little painting. But just adds another dimension to it. It just lifts it up even more. And then, <laughs> We're going to add none more, one more color. Or we could just leave it like that. Maybe I'll just leave it like that. It looks kind of cute. And if you want to take some of the green, or actually, never mind the green, a little bit of gray, just kind of like go on the side of this, kind of wash it down the side, and here. And then where the knot is, Take a little gray, go on the outside of that. And over here, just like that. So you you can see the where the knot meets. I'm gonna grab a little darker gray or slash almost like black and really outline that knot and then the side of the the scarf. And then I noticed that I didn't have any green in here, so I'm going to just go back in and fill that green of the sweater. Just peeking through. And the present. Okay, so the present could be red, yellow, blue, green. We could have a red bow. Um, I might make a red bow on the present. It seems like red bows are the, the way to go for Christmas. And you can keep the present white if you want to. I'll probably do like a nice pretty yellow color. If I did that, I probably would have painted the yellow first and the red on top. I don't know. I'm, the, I'm on the fence about what color I want to paint it. 
you know. So um, at this point, you can go in and add, say, to take the darker green again that you've been mixed up, and you can do the little lines that I did for the knitting on the sweater, just a simple double parallel lines to indicate the ribbing on the edge of the sweater and here. I'm just going to go in and tweak some dark green in here. Okay, so just do that dark green on the bands. Maybe put a little dark green under the edge here. Just like that. And go back in for your little, again with the bear, with the really dark tones. It dries pretty light. And you can add some just nice little fuzzy dark tones. Again, because it's going to dry much lighter than you think. So you're going to keep layering, adding some more color. See, I'm just going to keep adding some more color. And for his face, we wanted to get the tan color, like I said, just to uh, mix a little yellow with that Van Dyke brown. It's going to go on the yellowish side, but really light. It's going to fill that in. Just a really pale, pretty tannish color. Keep it simple. If you want to add a couple of tones, just a little bit, just go in here so it doesn't look so flat. Just add a little bit of that brown, just slightly darker. The present, I don't know, maybe I'll make it blue. But I think they want the background blue, so I don't know if I want to, I think a yellow kind of present. Or it could be purple. I think I'll do golden color. So I'll fill that in. Just this bright yellow. I'll go around the red bow. If I was going to do yellow, I wasn't sure what color I was going to do. I probably would have painted the yellow first, but I can still manipulate it. I'll just paint a nice little pretty yellow present. Now you could have made the present green, uh, red and then did a different color bow, like a blue. And then I'll add a little brown, brown and red, and deeper yellow kind of right where the hands are kind of meeting it. It's giving a little shade. And then the bottom. All right, we're getting, we're building here. And for the hat, oh, the bird actually, we can do the bird. A little bit deeper blue than we had before. And we're gonna go in and do his little wing. See, I just outlined it with like a real dark blue. And the tail, I'll put a little darker blue for the tail. So I outlined it. I'm going to clean off my brush, take some water, and just kind of push it around. And then take that same color and just kind of see, I'm just pushing that same color all around the little body and here. And grab a little darker paint again. See, I'm just tapping it. Tap, tap, tap. Tap, 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 tap. And there you go. This little fuzzy guy. And put a little bit darker tone on the bottom too. Just fixing the tail. Voila! I put the yellow beak. Nice golden yellow. Oops. There we go. And then we can you know, put the little black dot for the eye. And the little legs. <laughs> you got your bird. Now, if this kind of dried a little bit, I might grab a little of that blackish gray and put those little fuzzy marks in again. Really dark because it will really pull it out. Same thing on the brim of the hat with this little teeny skinny brush. Put a few really dark strokes, kind of just going out like that.
then you know it's like a fuzzy, fuzzy hat. And while you're there, you go in and grab that darker brown, and you can go and do that little inner part of the ear. Just like that. Grabbing some more of that dark pink going out here. See, we're getting like real detailed here. Going in and adding some more. Just pushing the paint around. Kind of like really dry brushy, kind of little bit of water and just pushing it on the side there. It's just going to give the bear a little more oomph instead of looking flat. And then down here, you want them cute, right? Just kind of push that paint around. It's the constantly adding the colors. I'm going to add some more brown over here and some over here. Because watercolor dries really light, so. All right. We can do his little cheeks and his mouth and his face. So I have a little bit of the red. I'm going to water it down, dab it in a paper towel, and put a little circle here for his little cheeky cheeks. It's the pink cheek. And we'll grab our really black or pants gray whatever you have for his nose just fill that in except a little white dot just leave a little white dot on the upper right hand corner and there's the little eyes When the cheeks dry, we can put in the little mouth area. Like I said, you could put a little more, just really dark black, wishy wishies. Okay, and then for the hat, I'm gonna take my bigger brush again, the long round, and go in and grab some of this crimsony color I have. It's a little bit deeper red, and just kind of wish in. What I mean by wishing, and just kind of pushing around some deeper red. You can make it fuzzy too. You can add little marks coming out. It just seemed a little flat. And I can get it even darker on that one side. Grab some of this color. Just really just a little bit darker here. See how I just take the brush and I just kind of push it around up here. And it just gives it that more three-dimensional look. Pulling this back. Underneath the scarf here, I'll take a little bit of gray. Because it's very bright white, and it wouldn't be that way. I'm going to wash in a little gray. Just under here. It wouldn't be that white, because it would be shadowed by his face. Okay, and so we're going to work on the background and the trees while the mouth dries. Trees, you know, obviously green. Just do some simple green trees. La 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 la. You don't have to do three trees, you can do as many as you want. I just chose to do three. And we'll do a simple, like, bluish gray background, pale. So you want to use a bigger brush, but then watch out for the, like the, the edges of the teddy bear. So I'm going to grab my Grumbacker, and I've got all these blues here. I mix a little of the gray with that. Get this really grayish blue color. And I want it fairly light. So I'm going to wash it in. So I put it on the paper, wet on dry, then I'm grabbing water and I'm pushing it around with water so it's even paler. I'm working kind of fast here. If you wanted to do 
if you want to mask the design and do the background first, do that. But I, I don't mind like leaving white around it and but you kind of just want to work pretty fast. So I'm just washing in some color. You could have got it all wet and then washed in the color. That might work a little bit faster than what I'm doing. There's a couple ways to do it. Whatever works for you. I don't mind working wet on wet on dry and just washing in pretty fast. And don't be bogged down if there's white spaces around by the teddy bear and the other elements. It's kind of a nice, pretty loose look. Oop, that color wasn't supposed to be there. Gonna have to add some gray. Oh, see, happy accident. Sometimes it's nice to have like a little dark color on the side. I'll grab some gray and throw that in there. Don't freak out when things like that happen. Actually, they end up being better. See, I kind of like it now. Why didn't I do that in the first place? <laughs> and I was going in here and washing in the blue. Now this might seem a little more intermediate for some people, but that's fine. I can't do all beginner tutorials. And I've been seeing some of you guys do some amazing things. So I'm just washing in all that blue color getting as close to it without wrecking the teddy bear and like I like that dark side so why don't I more, add some more dark side like I said happy accidents so I'm going to go in and add some darker color to this side I kind of like that yeah the stormy sky and you can add a lot of snow we're going to be doing gouache on his on his um, sweater in a minute I'm just going to wash in this color. I don't want to wash in too dark around the bird because then the little blue bird gets washed away. We don't even see him. And we want to see him because he's so cute. So simple down on the bottom here where he's in the snow. Just take the same blue color you've been doing from the background. Maybe add a little brighter blue to it. And just go like this where he's in the snow. Simple washing in color. You can wash some of that blue down here. Like he's standing, you can see the shadow of him standing in the snow. Simple and even lighter down here. That's simple. And do a little wash of color here, out in the background. Now while that's wet, I love that, you know, you know how I love my, um, <laughs> gouache technique. I'm grabbing my gouache. Where is it? It's hiding on me. Here we go. Well, it's still damp. You take that gouache. You water it down. It has a nice look to it. Get it really loose. We're going to do some splattering. Just in like that wet part of the blue. don't want to get the teddy. It's too big, you can just kind of take off some of the paint and make it a little bit smaller. I've been doing all these winter wonderland cards and tutorials where you put it when it's wet on wet and then it bleeds a little bit. It has this really kind of like magical quality to it. So I'm seeing I'm trying to splat everywhere but the bear. tricky so you might want to put a piece of paper around here if you can't get that while we have the gouache let's grab our little teeny brush where did you go mr. brush okay and um, you don't want it super loose this time you want a little thicker paint less water and we're gonna put in the little decorations of the sweater little V's that go across And you could put in like a big snowflake, the bottom of it, indicate there are snowflakes on your sweater. See? Just simple lines. And we can do the bees again, another row of bees. Do the bees on the arm, 
do some white lines simple like that just really simple you want to do a little line going across here little dashes you know change it up doesn't have to be little wee's I think it's kind of cute and that's almost done so then if you want to actually do some smaller snow you could do that if you wanted to get real detailed with the present um, you might want to put in stripes or something like a darker yellow here put in some stripes this is where we get really detailed you know the part behind the bow you just kind of fix up a little bit and then we're going to add his little cute mouth a little line and then curve to the bottom curve to the bottom look he's so happy he says thank you for creating me <laughs> my trees got a little washed out if you want to put snow on the trees and look darker green you know make them like real real trees I just put triangles but you can put a little fuzzy dark color here do 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 and you could put some snow on it if you wanted to get real technical when that dries you can put some white on it for snow with the gouache And then since this blue kind of like all washed out the same color, I'd go back in and get some deeper blue and go in here. Just wash it a little bit. That's a little too dark. I'll take up some of the color. And that's easy to do if you have anything close by with paper towel or something just looked up if the color got a little too dark so I'm gonna add that just washing in a little bit I don't know how I got brown there but that's okay and then again so this tree is this one's still drying I'm just gonna pull off the paint make it dry faster <laughs> and you grab your gouache Oops, it's bleeding it. Don't pay attention to that. <laughs> okay, so while the tree is drying, you can go back in and I'm just going to tap in some white gouache on top of this. See, I'm just boop, 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 little lines going outward. Do, 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 do. Sporadically, little lines you're adding to the tree. If you want to put snow all in front of him, you could do that now instead of splattering it I kind of like how we didn't do that but feel free to add little dots you know I'm adding some little dots here to show you where we didn't hit with the loose you can add a really concentrated white dot in between those little once it's splattered and it has this nice glow to it. Like I said, you can add some dots like I'm doing here. That's pretty much it. I mean, on the scarf, I might go in and tweak a little bit more. I might go in and add a little more dark green up in here. You know where I feel like it's gotten too light just tweak that a little bit but other than that it's pretty much it it's a pretty long tutorial actually but I can't help myself sometimes like I said you go in here and you tweak the little scarf out add a little deeper gray line here and here If you want to put the blue in between the little, look, I didn't do blue here. Oops, that's a little too dark. You can do that. And again, if you want to go back in and add even deeper, darker little fuzzies, because I said it constantly dries lighter. 
you can go and do that but I pretty much think he's done I think he's super cute and I'm gonna lift up my tape to reveal the finished product super cute who wouldn't like that little guy huh so I hope you guys like this tutorial um, if you have any questions leave them in the comment section all the supplies everything I use is in the description box um, if you're a Patreon member, you can download Traceable, but you can just slow the video down so you can see how I draw it. And, you know, it might take some time to slow it down and see how I draw it, but you can do it. I know you can do it. I mean, I've seen the... Well, I hope I didn't realize that the, I, was, I was painting, the painting was overexposed with the lighting. Sorry, guys. This is how it's supposed to look. <laughs> I can't edit that out. I mean, sometimes I make such mistakes, but I hope you guys appreciate what I did anyway. Um, so if you have any questions, leave them in the comment section. Um, sorry about the overexposure in the last half of that um, but this is the color tones so if you have any questions like I said leave them in the comment section take care and have a great weekend